right, hi everyone, we are back and we are looking at redox reactions. So remember that redox reactions, I'll do a little summary first because most probably after the break you'll be like, oh my god, what is this? We've got reduction and we've got oxidation reactions. So these are special type of reactions in chemistry. Oxidation reactions involves the loss of electrons. Well done. Let me write oxidation up here. And reduction is the gain of electrons. So as you can see in these reactions that I've drawn in here, this reaction is an oxidation reaction because you have lost electrons as the reaction has gone on. And the second one here with copper is a reduction reaction because we have gained electrons. All right, and the next thing we looked at is if this is the oxidation reaction, that means this reactant here is called the reductant. Because once we have finished this reaction, we are causing the reduction reaction to occur. We're providing the two electrons needed for this reduction reaction to occur. So that makes this C2 plus the oxidant. Because after it's gained the two electrons and become copper, copper will then undergo the oxidation reaction. So a good way to think about it is in an oxidation reaction, the reactant is the opposite, it's the reductant. And in this reduction reaction, the reactant here is the oxidant. So think of opposites if you're really struggling to get the hang of it. But hopefully that makes sense. All right, the other thing we looked at um, near the end of last term was oxidation numbers. So these are numbers that we assign to the elements um, involved in a redox reaction. And according to what happens to these numbers, we can predict if an oxidation or reduction reaction has occurred. So over here, this is from a past video. That's so cool to say that. <laughs> you can see that there are certain rules um, as to how we assign our oxidation numbers. So if it's a free element or something that's neutral, not in a compound, the oxidation number is zero. In ionic compounds, I should have stuck to one color, the oxidation number equals the charge on an ion. That's why we need to know our ions. So something like aluminium will have a plus three, oxygen or oxides will have minus two. Hydrogens always have an oxidation number of plus one, except in metal hydrides. Oxygen will always have an oxidation number of minus two, except in peroxides. In neutral compounds, the oxidation numbers add up to zero. And in ions, the oxidation number add up to the charge of the ion. And just remember when we've got our electronegative atoms, so atoms that really want to get electrons, um, they go, the oxidation numbers go in order to the charge on the ions, which is as written here. So what we got to remember is that if the oxidation number reduces from one side of a reaction to the other, a reduction has occurred for that element. And if the oxidation number increases, it's an oxidation. So that's also a pretty nifty way to tell the difference between an oxidation and a reduction reaction. So hopefully this is a nice little refresher as to what we were doing and don't worry, we'll give it a practice with today's work as well. So if you've completely forgotten and you're like, oh my gosh, I need some practice, we have got you sorted. <laughs>